everyone is built for an adventure, excitement, the unknown. You're built for that. You're not built for mediocrity and predictability. And I think those just atrophy this little something in your soul. This is the Next Peak Podcast, where we help you redefine success and achieve goals that are actually important to you based on research and real life stories. And I am your host, Clint Herndon, and I have such a fun guest today, and you're going to have to put your seatbelts on for this one. There's going to be, we're going to be talking about explosions and stunt driving and all kinds of fun stuff. If you've tuned in for very long, you, you know that we talk to people who are talking about achieving goals and they had dreams and they, they went after them and they've been incredible stories. This one is going to blow your socks off because my guest, Cam Johnston from Greystone, uh, is here to tell you about something really radical that kind of popped in his head and he's like, I'm just going to make this happen. So I'm so excited to talk to Cam. Thanks for coming on today, sir. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. That was quite the introduction. I'll have to live up to. I don't think that'll be a problem. So, Cam, let's just give a broad overview of what Greystone is, and then I want to talk about how you got there and where the idea came from, that kind of thing. Absolutely. So, in a sentence, Greystone creates the most hyper-realistic scenarios and experiences for a very elite group of clients. So, whether you want to, goodness, rappel onto a yacht and rescue hostages from cartel members or protect an embassy that's being overrun by rioters. There's nothing we can't create. We can recreate your favorite scene from your favorite action movie. And at the end of the day, clients come out of it completely changed, completely redefined. It's very, it's a powerful moment. And these can be days and weeks long. Is that what I understand? The longest one we've done so far is two and a half days, but there really is no limit to what we can do. That's incredible. So let's back up before we dive, dive too far into this. Where did this idea come from to get Greystone off the ground? So the idea came from when I was younger. I was a kid. I watched a movie called The Game with Michael Douglas. And the movie essentially is about a company that creates these hyper-realistic scenarios for the ultra-wealthy. It blows their mind. They don't know what's real, what's fake. Everything's flipped upside down. There's twists left and right. And then if you've seen the movie, Michael Douglas comes out of it changed permanently. It's powerful. It's intense. It, it gives these people, these wealthy individuals who might be comfortable in life, it gives them a chance to be very uncomfortable and let go of the reins. And I decided one day I would turn that into a company because there really was nothing like that from what you saw in the movie in real life. So that's where the idea stemmed from. What was it that, as you're watching that movie, what was it that just, you go, man, I got to make that happen. Like, that is the coolest thing ever. The ending for me. The ending. The, the way Michael Douglas broke down and cried, and it was so, so powerful. I wanted to give that to people. And our very first scenario, things went smooth. Plenty of hiccups behind the scenes that nobody notices on the outside looking in, but... All I wanted was that moment at the end of the game where he breaks down and to a T, I mean, you couldn't have scripted it better. The client broke down and it was beautiful and they were in a very reflective state for weeks and still I, I talk to them regularly to this day and I'll share a quote. The quote was, in 36 hours, Greystone healed what 30 years of therapy failed to do. So that meant a lot. And That's three- amazing. So when that first one goes through, was that your moment of like, I did something good here? Yeah. And I never have, I have a tough time finding, you know, satisfaction or finish line. And I felt, but yes, I felt in that moment as I watched his reaction or their reactions, it was, I knew I was on the right track. Yeah. That's incredible. And and just to clarify, again, I want to dig a lot deeper into this and what you guys do, but this isn't going paintballing with your buddies and hanging from a a secure rope over a trampoline, right? This is a little more hardcore than that. This is. I mean, you're fully immersed. For our full missions, you're surrounded by actors, stuntmen. I mean, at the drop of a hat, something might happen that you don't know. Is this real? Is this fake? What the hell is going on here? I mean, we have law enforcement on it. We have helicopters. We have pilots. 
stunt drivers, car crashes, explosions, shootouts. One of our more recent missions, it took just about 65 people behind the scenes just to put it on. Uh, it's it's just for two people. And no, it's not your typical, you know, day at the paintball course. <laughs> yeah, it's a little more fast paced and hardcore than that. And these are professional actors, like you said, stuntmen. You've yeah, got so when they're not working on Greystones projects, they're on literally the biggest film, film and TV projects. They're wow. on. And then you have operators who've been in different special operations, armed forces. Yes, yeah, so we've well. uh, Law enforcement, FBI, Army, Marines. We have some SEALs. We have like, rescue swimmers, some great medics. We have the best of the best as far as law enforcement and military. And then we've married them with the best of the best in the film industry as far as those specialties go. And, and putting those two different minds together, it's, we've created some magic for sure. That's awesome. And for our listeners, what was your background before you started this company and kind of got this off the ground? I was in the Navy. I was in the uh, the SEAL teams, as we talked about, for six years. And then before that, just high school. And I mentioned I went in the Navy at, at 17. High school was just sports. I did Muay Thai. I did MMA and Jiu-Jitsu for about a year and a half or two years uh, before the Navy. And then before that, I was just a competitive swimmer. I joined the Navy, did that for six years and matured in the Navy. Went from a kid to whatever I am now and learn a lot of great skills and lessons that I brought into running a business and but, you know, no college, nothing like that. What, when you look back at your time in the Navy and now looking at running a business, what were the, some of the things you learned or that you had to learn in life that you hadn't up to that point that now translate into being a business owner, executing a ginormous dream. It's not just like, I want to open a Subway sandwich around the corner. It's, this is legitimate with high risk and all kinds of pyrotechnics and all kinds of fun, but also certainly a lot of logistics that have to go into it. I would say accountability and, and discipline. So like I had been talking to you earlier, I don't think that there's a lot of stress in modern life. And I had mentioned curveballs can be thrown into people's lives, which are tragic or terrible. But as far as a day-to-day -day consistent basis, I think people lack accountability. Um, performing, sticking to your word, being on time, and then discipline, sticking to something when it starts to suck. And that excitement that you feel for the first two weeks wears out and you have to keep going for another two years. That's discipline, right? Doing things that suck, prolonging your enjoyment now so that you can be successful in the mid to late future. And the Navy taught me that. There was constant accountability. You do not get to be late when someone tells you or asks you to do something and you give them your word that it will be done, it gets done. They don't have to follow back up with you. And those skills, they seem basic and they seem overlooked, but the, when those become habits, I think that's that translates into a successful business. Yeah. And when you first started, and I don't know exactly how it started, so maybe you can shine some light on that, but was there a date that you can remember of like, this is when my business kind of started and then it wasn't probably getting off the ground as quickly as you had wanted it to because you've got this grandiose dream. What was that early part like when you, when day one started until you finally got to your mission, your first mission that you were able to launch? So there's a couple phases I would be thinking back on Greystone. And we started it, or I started it, at a, on a property in North Georgia. And I spent probably about, Two to three weeks out of every month up there on this property, living in this trailer that the owner had put on the end of the property and um, sleeping on the floor, building out this property. I had a base camp. I it was doing it on quite a budget. I built a, a very cool shooting range. I had an excavator come in and dig out this underground tunnel. Then I framed it up, and we had you know this underground human trafficking ring that we would raid and and kill these dudes. I was part of the scenario. And then we ran our first scenario and the county kicked us out <laughs> too loud. They had gotten 23 complaints. Someone in the county told us that was actually one or two people who had all their friends and family file fake complaints. I can't confirm or deny that. I don't know. But we got kicked out of town a quarter million dollars later in eight months. And it was, it was an interesting test. Oh my gosh. Starting over. So that's what you're talking about, discipline, when it doesn't go the way you want it to right away. Right. It'd be very easy to just fold up and go, okay, well, shoot, I had this idea, it didn't work out, move on to the next thing. 
Right. But instead, what did you do after that? I brought on another investor who believed in it. And I, I almost followed the same model. I just thought maybe I need more property. Maybe I just need more of a buffer between neighbors and myself. I was thinking pretty short-sighted. Um, and so I started looking at properties, and I found one that was twice as big. Long story very short, I stumbled upon this town, Milledgeville, Georgia. I have nothing but incredible things to say about this town. Every single person in this town is supportive. They're friendly. They're open-minded. They're just good people. And they showed us some of their assets. I mean, they have an entire criminally insane or Central State Hospital campus. It's 18,000 acres. Uh, we now rent out the criminally insane asylum on there. It's uh, four to 600,000 square feet. It's 28 acres. It's mind-blowing. There's underground tunnel systems. There's a whole basement. There's seven different buildings, five-story buildings. And that's just one place that we rent out that we you know, do some of our more climactic mission sequences at. But the town, yeah, they've been fantastic to us. We briefed it to all the county officials in the courthouse. They loved it. And yeah, now we do police chases, police escorts, car crashes. We're all over the town just making a ruckus. And so far, they've been supportive. I'd do anything for them. Great town. Yeah, that's awesome. You guys have some of those videos up on your Instagram page. I saw some of the car chases and helicopter stuff. It's pretty dang cool. <laughs> so can you give an idea? I don't want to give away anything, but maybe give an idea of what one of these missions might be like. Of course. So one of my favorite starts to one of our missions was it was two wives who purchased it for their husbands. And the two men were father and son. And they got to their house, and inside their kitchen was a stainless steel briefcase. And they open it up, and inside's a mission dossier, top secret, you know, mission packet, and then a gravestone card, and then a letter. And the letter essentially said that they've been recruited for for an operation, and a vehicle will be picking them up at their home in two hours. This is what to pack. Be outside at one fifty-five, right? So at two o'clock, they know that a vehicle's picking them up. They're just, they had heard of Greystone. They knew about it. So their minds are now running crazy. And at two o'clock on the dot, we land the helicopter in their front yard and we had guys with guns and they get out, they bring them on the helicopter. And then the next 36 hours, they were in it and they had, you know, some mission objectives. They went undercover, fake IDs. The mission went bad. And this was after a day of training. Yeah. And uh, the mission goes bad. They get kidnapped. They get rescued, and during the whole process, there was this DEA agent. She was kidnapped, and they had to go rescue her at the end and kill the main bad guy. And then we threw in just a few moments throughout the scenario that were really mind blowing. We flew one of their one of their families out, so his wife and his three kids. We actually gave one of his daughters acting lessons. So while he's after he'd been abducted by the cartel. They do all this research on him. They find out his real name, and then they send cartel members to go kidnap his daughter, and he watches it on FaceTime live. And Oh, my gosh. But we had flown them out here to Atlanta. They were you know, filming this five miles down the road, and we changed the license plates on the cars. So it was, San- it was California. So it was just really mind-blowing for him, very emotional watching his daughter get kidnapped, not knowing she had anything to do with this Greystone scenario. And um, for you to be just helpless... Watching that happen, it's pretty intense. But then, they, of course, they got rescued and got to kill all these people, and then their families were at the after party. So that was a breath of fresh air. So that, in a nutshell, is one of our experiences. So when you watch the reaction that people have, is it like that Michael Douglas moment when he falls through the ceiling and his whole life is put in front of him? It is. So that 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 moment in the movie was the inspiration to create this. Watching a grown man who has everything and – is successful and has lived this entire life, was calloused by 60 years of life and maybe lost a spouse. And he was divorced in the movie, but life just builds up on, on people and you're not immune from it just because you're, I'll use the word wealthy, but there's no outlet for, for those emotions that are just built up and you might not even know you have them. And then this just lays open your soul, these 36, 48 hour missions. And you just see things and you experience things and it's, the mind quickly makes you think it's real. So, Cam, when you're looking at these scenarios, you talked about how a lot of us, we don't have a very stressful life in in the United States. Like, 
we, I think a lot of us, and I'll speak to, it, I think a lot of us create our own stress because we, we don't have to worry about where our meals come from or where we're going to get water or shelter or any of those simple necessities that we have to have versus what other people face in other countries. When you bring some of these people in, this is not your typical middle income family. These are obviously people that that can afford something like this because there's a lot that goes into it. What is it about them that kind of draws them into this? Is it that they've never had to overcome resistance in this kind of way? What is it that kind of draws that out of them and they go, well, this is a cool idea. I want to I want to do this. It's the ultimate excitement, right? It's the ultimate adventure. There's nothing like it on earth, I could confidently say. At the very least, you're going to be doing things that other civilians, our spies rope, for instance, there, when we started our company, there had been nine civilians who had ever been on a spies rope, which is a rope that hangs underneath a helicopter. Everyone clips to it and the helicopter lifts up, extracts you, and now you're flying 200 feet below the helicopter just in a harness. There have been nine civilians that have ever done that, and now there are 34. That's awesome. Yeah, but those experiences alone, I mean, getting extracted on a helicopter, helocasting into a lake at 2 a.m., and then a Zodiac boat picks you up, and now you're raiding this mansion on night vision quietly, kidnapping the cartel dude's cousin. Like, those experiences alone are... That's not something you can just go do. So for that excitement, for that of those exclusive-type experiences, I could see... That being a huge draw. They're probably not, I I haven't had any clients that have gone into it openly talking about the reason for them doing it is that ending moment of total breakdown, total vulnerability and exposure. And that's more of a surprise because nobody has really been through something this intense in such a condensed period of time. They don't know how they're going to mentally react to it. It just sounds really cool, right? They, oh man, I'm going to go shoot guns and jump out of a helicopter and right hunt down terrorists with a team of former special operations dudes after I got real training for a day. Yeah, it's it's exciting stuff. It's very, I mean, you can't go do that in other places. How immersive have you found this to be? I mean, do people get lost in the experience and they they forget that it's uh, a recreational activity? <laughs> Yes, it, it's very, we've had some very intense reactions to it. So our special effects department that we have squibs, which are blood packs with a little charge on all the bad guys. And I mean, these are professional stuntmen, so they know when to arm their receivers. We have ones in special moments that go off audibly. So the 137 decibels or whatever from our guns actually sets off the squibs. So it's these clients, yes, they're going through these buildings and, They just came from a full day on the range shooting and hearing that ping on the steel, and now we use full load blanks. It's insanely realistic. You can't distinguish between our guns and a a real live ammo. So you pull the trigger, and next thing, blood is sent out of this bad guy's back onto the wall behind him, and he's on the ground. It's so realistic. Yes, we've had had some dudes. I don't want to use the word snap, but I will. Yeah, we've had some dudes really get into it. Okay. Yeah. So, like the light bulb went on, like it's wartime now, right? To quote, to quote someone who was wide-eyed and, and white coming out of one of these missions, he said, I thought I was killing people. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's very intense. <laughs> it's crazy. In your wildest dreams, did you ever think you could create something like this? I mean, or, or you were just convinced, like, I'm just going to make this happen? Yeah, I was convinced. That's I'm awesome. Thinking, uh, yeah, I always knew where it was going. So even when we got kicked out of North Georgia and... We're sitting on goose egg and wasted eight months of our time and way too much money. I didn't, I was still just as fired up. I just looked at that as uh, this weird force in nature pushing me onto the right track. Yeah. And now you've got a great facility. You have great staff that's growing, I understand. Great team, great town, great facilities. That's awesome. We've been blessed to put this together in a relatively short amount of time. Yeah, and one of the things that got my attention was our, our mutual friend, who's still an, an active SEAL. He had talked about one of the experiences he had in coming out and helping you guys with, I guess it was, I don't know if I'd call it charity, but outreach of some sort. It was a full-on mission that was purchased by a fantastic woman. She purchased it for her family, her two children and then her father. And then she had a friend and her friend's father come out with it. But she's done a lot of work with this incredible young man. His name's Marky. and. Uh, He's got a terrible disease. Essentially, his body doesn't produce collagen. And she had him out and just asked us, how can we get him involved? And we were able to get him as involved as we could. We got him on the helicopter and we got him 
you know, to, when we rescued Superman as part of the mission and he was right there at extraction as the explosions are going off and Superman comes out and we're shooting up all these bad guys and we get on the helicopter. So he got to be, he got to be involved. Yeah. That's amazing. It was. Yeah. When you step back, I mean, is this, is it rewarding? I, I know you're a very humble guy, so you're not championing yourself. But I mean, when you step back, you go like, wow, this is so cool to be part of. Like, I'm helping people in their lives. Yes. Yeah. yeah it's, it's very, very rewarding. When you say you have these bigger visions for where the business is going, what are the next evolutions or things that are going to be coming up? Just continuing to take Greystone to a level that, I mean, most people would think was just silly to even talk about, but there are people. So our team now, I mean, these are the people who are coordinating for movies with $200 million budgets. And then we have, I mean, just alone on our team right now, we're up to eight or nine former special operations dudes. And then that's not including all the other military and FBI. And the team we have right now, the production management side, we can do things that people can't even imagine. And, and I want this to become so incredibly exclusive, <sighs> maybe five, maybe six huge missions per year. And they, we take time with them. Not that we don't now by any means, but there's a level that I have in my head where it's absolutely absurd. So when you get one of these scheduled, how long does it take for you and your team to prepare before the client actually comes on? I like to take a minimum of six weeks. Oh, wow. So you're training everybody on their roles and going through all the stunts and the pyrotechnics and everything, huh? Exactly. Lots of walkthroughs, training. We do three phases of staff training. So we'll bring the staff in for four days at a time. We do that three different times. We have to do two practice scenarios, make sure all the pyrotechnics are on. Because when it's live and there's no redo, there's no pause, no take two, it's you say action Friday at 2 p.m., and everybody is in character knowing their cues down to the second for the next two, two and a half days. That's, yeah, everyone's got to be on top of it. So it's a lot that goes into it. That's awesome. But having the people around you that have experienced discipline in their respective fields probably makes that a little bit easier, right? Much easier. You don't have to train a bunch of people like me that are CPAs, okay. where to be, how, how to jump out of the helicopter, that kind of thing. Sure. Yeah. So... I, I always learn, personally, I learn a ton from failure. I think we all do, right? I think that's one of the things we, we're scared of because not, none of us want to fail because it might end up on Facebook or Instagram and we'll be embarrassed. But truly one of the biggest teachers, I think, is this experience of failure. When you look back, at, you said like the first mission jumps off and there were some things that didn't go the way you had planned, but the people on the receiving end, they didn't even know. They didn't even know anything different. What were some of the early things that you went, oh, gosh, we've got to adjust that or that's, I don't like the way that went? <laughs> the easier to say a list of things I didn't. <laughs> that, that went right? <laughs> yeah. Every, we have learned every single lesson, knock on wood. I mean, we have been tested over our first year and a half in this business. First year for sure. And having people in charge of certain positions. So I, my background in the Navy, it's very much, Clint, we need two jet skis at this pier next Tuesday at 8 a.m. for training. You say, okay, Cameron. And then it better happen. <laughs> and then that's it. And we show up at 745 next Tuesday and there's two jet skis on the pier. Great team. But I take responsibility for a lot of it. Like no one can really read my mind. And in my head going into this, I would tell someone, this is your role. This is your sheet with where you have to be, what has to happen. And I didn't think I needed department heads. I didn't think I needed directors, productions assistants. And essentially that ended up being me and a very small number of people running around <laughs> like crazy people. And so that, that was a huge one is just hiring the right people, making sure all these departments are taken care of, are taken care of squared away. And they're all answering to one person who I have. He's our COO and he's fantastic at what he does. But then just the little things that just timing pieces and helicopter breaking down. And I mean, you name it, it's happened. Cars not starting, um, <laughs> losing car keys, just all of these crazy things that <laughs> Yes, on the receiving end, they never knew it happened, but we learned a lot. To answer there's, there's a little bit of a freak out moment in each of those, right? Like, oh man, are you kidding me? <laughs> yes. Yeah. As you grow this, is this um, something that you want to do 
on a regular, I mean, is this a regular thing that happens on a weekly basis, monthly basis, or what, what's your vision for how often this will? Take so off? our huge mega missions, I would like to get to where we're doing five or six of those a year, but what we're about to roll out are our Greystone events. So essentially that's a smaller Greystone experience, still very intense, still going to be doing some very unique and cool things, but you're not getting kidnapped. You're not getting thrown into the bed of a car or nothing like that. It's more of, and you don't have to do the entire event yourself. So Clint could go on our events page and see that we have an upcoming event in October and that it might be $10,000 a ticket, but there's 15 seats. So instead of you needing to figure out how to put $150,000 into an event for you and your friends, now you could just pay for it by yourself. Lower barrier to entry, still getting the full craziness minus some of the more you know emotional or darker aspects like that. And we could, we could do those probably one every month. And this is a newer business model. Our first one should be one of the last weekends in September. And we have the page for everything built out. We have about four events being planned and that'll all be live. Should be next week. Okay. And that's going to be on your website? Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. So for anybody listening, it's graystone.us and it's gray with an E. We'll have that in the show notes as well. One of the things that I like what you're doing and the way you described it is you're doing what a leader should do and you're delegating. You're finding the people that are great at what they do and you're letting them be great at what they do. And then you're you're functioning in your strengths. Is that how did that all come together? I mean, did you know any of these people coming into this? Was this like a group think or was this kind of like Cam just woke up and was like, I'm gonna make this happen and I'll fill in the blanks with whoever I can. It was that I actually uh, woke up at 1 a.m. with the details of our scenario. And I said, I have to start this. And I laid there on my phone for two hours typing our first scenario. And that was 25 months ago. Were you still in the Navy at that point? No, no. I I guess nine months or so. Okay. And then you started recruiting people or making connections? The way I connected with these people was, was so, I mean, I hate the word luck. But it was just meeting these people in the film industry and the right connections to pull this off was, I know I had no connections. I knew nobody. I just knew I wanted to make this idea. It didn't even make sense coming into contact with all the correct people for this to become a reality. And then to answer your question on delegating, that was very tough for me. I'm not a good delegator. I I wouldn't have guessed that. Yeah, I, I like to control everything and do everything myself. And these are the hundred things that have to be done. I'll do it myself. And that it was tough to let go. I'm constantly trying to develop to be a better leader. That's awesome. So in chasing this dream, what's something that you'd love for everybody to hear that has been your experience or something that stood out to you as you've gone along this journey? I would absolutely say that you get one life. You know what I mean? And if you have any idea that makes you jump out of bed and excites you, pursue it. The worst thing that could happen is you fail. And the best thing that could happen is all your wildest dreams come true. But if you never even try, then 100% I can guarantee you, you'll be miserable. And the only excuse people have is that the odds are small. And I'm not much of a metaphor guy, but just imagine Tom Brady's down by five and there's five seconds left in the Super Bowl and he's going for a Hail Mary and he just spikes the ball and walks off the field. You would never anticipate that to happen. And his excuse might be, well, the odds of me completing the 70-yard throw are statistically less than 3%. So what's the point of taking the shot, which wouldn't even make sense? So why would you look at life the same way? We know you get one life. Just do something with it. Yeah. That's a pretty hard thing for people to grasp. I do, and I don't know why. Hmm. It was never a limitation for you. Yeah. No. Yeah, that's awesome. When people come in with this background, I, mean, I don't know your clients. I'm guessing most of them are probably pretty confidential and it probably should be. But when they come in, are they have they already put significant limits on their life before they step foot in Greystone, even though they're quote unquote successful and wealthy? I think those limits just become habitual with just the way you live life. If you're not Push you, and you can push yourself in one aspect and neglect yourself in others for sure. I mean, somebody could work 18 hours a day on their company and neglect their their marriage or their fitness. Um, but I think as a whole, the comfort has stagnated. People, everyone is built for an adventure, excitement, the unknown. You're built for that. You're not built for mediocrity and predictability. 
And I think those just atrophy this little something in your soul or it just gets tighter and tighter. It doesn't go away. But yes, I think there's almost like a calcified spirit for adventure that's, that's in everybody. And to be able to let that out and show someone who's experienced great success in one realm, but yes, probably has limits on themselves as far as I can't do that. Or man, I wish I could be able to do that. We had a 76 year old go through one of our scenarios and crush it. And it, it reinvigorated his spirit at 76 when he thought he was in his, the final pages of his final chapter. Now he's like, my God, what did I just, what did I just do? And I'm 76. Still got some life to live. Powering. Exactly. Still has a life to live. Yeah. That's awesome. Awesome, man. Well, Hey, we, uh, we're going to wrap things up, but I want to ask you, do you have, I always ask people for their top three books or top three resources. I don't know if you're a reader or you're listening to podcasts or whatever your resources are. What are your top three go-tos, whether it's a book or a podcast or a person that you like to go and get information from? Favorite book I've ever read is The E-Myth. And that's, uh, you read that? No. It's great. It's, it doesn't truly pertain to my business, but it does pertain to most all businesses. And it's, it goes into the psychology of starting a business and structuring it in a certain way that is, it can be wrapped up in a package, essentially franchise, even if you're not looking to franchise. Um, but that book's fantastic. And then do you have a tight core of friends, advisors, people that are in your corner when you do have those bad days and you're like, gosh, uh, am I on the right track? And they're rallying around you. Who Who is that core for you? Past clients, I have some incredible friends, incredible friends who can give it to you straight and honestly not sugarcoat anything. Good That's deal, man. Yeah. Uh, Cam, any parting shots before we uh, wrap it up? I don't think so. This is fantastic. Yeah, thanks for coming on, man. I'm so fascinated. I I want to be part of one of these experiences at some point down the road. Certainly, if my buddy comes on, I'll have to uh, <laughs> come see you. Okay. Uh, but, hey, if you've enjoyed the conversation today, please take time to check out Cam's website. Again, graystone.us. You can find him on Instagram. So please tune in to what he's got going on. Like he said, there's an event coming up in October, September, October time frame that will show up on the website. And guys, uh, again, your dream might not be to host a, I don't even know what to call this, an experience where people are shooting each other and jumping out of helicopters and, and driving like crazy on a stunt course. But I think if you've learned something in this time, it's that we probably need to dream bigger. You know, we put a ceiling on what we can be. And what Cam has done is said, I don't care whether this is logical. I don't care whether this is something that should or shouldn't happen. I'm just going to make it happen. And he's doing it and he's getting the rewards from that. His clients are getting the experience and, and it's changing their lives, which is pretty freaking incredible. So anyway, thanks for tuning in today. I was super excited to have this conversation and I'm so glad that Cam took the time to be on. So thank you, sir, for your time. Thank you, Clint, for your time. Thank you for having me. Yeah. If you guys liked what you heard today, please subscribe, leave us a review, and share it with a friend. And you can always catch up with uh, me or my co-host, Dr. Parker Houston, on our webpage, nextpeakpodcast.com, or find Parker on his page, which is leadyoufirst.com. Until next week, keep climbing your next peak. <laughs>